several people come here by the grace of God and thousands others following online let me tell you the truth it is true that most people love Jesus and they love me and I'm grateful for that but let me submit to you that nobody will come and sit down and waste their three, four, five hours. From as early as eight o'clock, nine o'clock, there are people here sitting down as though they don't have what to do. You think human beings are that stupid? Say value. One encounter, genuine encounter by the spirit and pages of your life can open just like that. It was said during the days of the, the revival of God's generals that meetings would be happening maybe 6 p.m. and by 12, 2 p.m. you would see people queuing up, patiently waiting, praying in tongues and inventing all kinds of skills to draw energy until that time. Listen, can I tell you, the proof that you are not valuable or you have not developed your value is that your absence mean nothing to those around you when your absence means nothing to those around you it means your presence is not contributing anything serious please listen carefully i'm provoking you for a reason you know how valuable you are by the reaction that happens with your absence jesus disappeared for three days and the disciples wanted they were almost dying they had to say look let's go back to fishing and when Jesus came up, there are many of you, if in your workplace, you decide to take a break for two weeks, you will return back and they'll say, it looks like we've not seen your face. You say, well, I've not been around. You say, oh, no wonder. But absolutely nothing changed with your absence. That should not be so. You should be such a contributor, first to kingdom come and then to your environment, that the slightest manifestation of your absence will be felt so deeply. That is a sign that you are valuable. Hallelujah. The gift of a man may get room for him and brings him before great people. Listen, when God was preparing me for ministry, this was one of the things I learned especially from great fathers and veterans like Dr. Miles Monroe because at that time many people had a lot of superstitious approach to ministry they just believed that once your heart was sincere without any development any refinement you just make sure your heart is pure towards God eventually you will become great it didn't make even spiritual sense to me because Jesus even though he was the son of God it took him 30 years of preparation and the Bible did not hide his diligence. What will the Son of God, the Logos of God be doing at the temple at age 12? For 18 solid years, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus was preparing for a ministry of three and a half years. John, the prophet, was in the wilderness. Even though a prophet from God, he did not spare his training. Can I tell you, sincerely please hear me ladies and gentlemen there are many of you who have not been able to make full proof of your ministry your ministry they are not just fivefold but every expression of value that you were sent by god to bring to your world because you do not know that your reward depends on your gift most people say my reward depends on god you are not lying but you need to understand how his economy works as sincere as you are as a ceo as born again as you are if someone comes to tell you i'm a member of koinonia please employ me let me be um the person to handle all your finances i'm honest you will tell the person as well eh? write your prayer point because that is a prayer point and go and drop it at the miracle service but you will not employ the person why because even though the person has told you he is a Christian. You will need to be able to vet his proficiency and that without any biases or prejudices. There are many people who downplay the place of value and sacrifice. Listen to me. The reward system of the kingdom, I repeat again, 
is connected to value years ago this my precious people in the worship team they were itching so much to find expression they wanted to go for meetings any meeting at all and i stopped them i said you are not going anywhere you guys want aside from blessing the lord you want to be local champions who will be angry competing with one another and fighting and insulting those who go ahead of you that is the trajectory the sad trajectory of mediocres they usually will do very small and not rise then they become frustrated because everyone goes and leaves them they have to coin out a justification and the way they do that is by fighting everyone and everything ahead of them it ought not to be so I remember challenging them and I said sit down I love you people but the songs you are bringing the nations cannot bless the Lord with that kind of investment stay and build yourself today to God be the glory you celebrate what they are doing you see and even today it's not like I'm done with them praise God remember I said thousand cubits after they measure it you rest then another tape comes again My dear violinist, when he, he sent me a text to appreciate me and I said, young man, you are doing well. May God bless you. I said, but go and rehearse. There's so much you need to learn. Don't think because people you played violin, go and rehearse. I know the sound of excellence and quality. Go and rehearse. Build yourself again. Can I tell you, when people raise a very high bar for you, it's because they want the, hope, the nations to celebrate God in your life. This mediocre mentality we have that has endorsed mediocrity, you find out that people never rise. For doing nothing, we keep clapping for ourselves. As a man of God, you preach a sermon that even you, you know that's not what God told you. You know that the Holy Spirit cannot breathe upon such a dull sermon, spiritually and intellectually dull. Okay, forgive yourself and go back and walk. You just assume because somebody who is your friend forever just came and said, what a brilliant sermon. I, and you actually believe that lie. Now, it's not about competition, but you need to charge yourself. I listen to all my teachings for two reasons. One, to be blessed by it. But number two, to make sure I never remain at that level. It is a rule and a covenant without excuse. Listen, until you give your pursuit in life and destiny a business approach. A business approach meaning you have to be strict with yourself. Don't mark yourself, write an exam and organize speech and price for yourself for doing nothing. There are nations, there are territories. Now God is sending us to the United Kingdom. You can imagine the hunger, tens of thousands of people coming and there comes an ill-prepared preacher not knowing what he's doing. You stand and you don't know what to say. Then you tell them God is going to move, nothing happens. You tell them God will heal, nothing happens. You quote all kinds of wrong scriptures. No. No. Can I tell you, I have taught you that there are many closed doors in our lives that are a sign of God's mercy. Because if that door had opened with our level of ill preparedness, it would take a long time to get those doors to open again so god closes those doors as a sign of his mercy and challenges you to prepare joseph make sure you are ready for pharaoh before you ask the wine presser to make him remember you because when you stand before pharaoh it is a dream to interpret if joseph had messed up he will go back to the prison and remain there forever i made up my mind that i was not only going to be a spiritual preacher but that my communications will come with a blend of spirituality and intelligence for god's sake that when you are teaching people they must find a point of applicability there must be intelligence no matter the mysticism and how a mysterious what you are communicating is learning from jesus you must be able to break down kingdom mysteries in a way and to a context that people can understand and find a point of applicability in their lives are we together what do you do with the gift of God 
in your life number one you discover it I'm showing you the dynamics now because knowing maybe you write this first knowing you are gifted is not enough you must pay the price to refine and develop that gift knowing you are gifted ladies and gentlemen knowing you have skill knowing you are called knowing you are a businessman knowing you are a prophet knowing you are an apostle is not enough paying the price to develop it that is where your honor is and that is where your reward lies the reward is not in the discovery the re